Hi uh, guys, it's Mr. Bennett here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at energy, and energy is actually, I think, uh, one of the best parts of physics. So, and what we're saying here is that money of physics. So, if we think about uh, energy in the primitive economy, you do a job and you get paid in goods. Nowadays, what you do if you do your job, you get paid the money, and then you can go and buy goods. All right. So, so using money simplifies the economy, and um, certainly makes it easier for you to buy what you need. So why does energy help? Okay, motion generally is is probably hard as you've found out. We have to look at things like momentum and acceleration and velocity and we have these vector things that uh, keep propping up. So you need to account for the direction and the magnitude of those things. Well energy is actually not a vector quantity, it's just a number. It's a scalar quantity. So we can use it to predict uh, how much it's going to cost by looking at the motion. So when we start looking at the two types of energy that we're going to consider here is a thing called potential energy or gravitational energy. All right, and that's equal to the weight times by its height. Um, and the metric unit that we use is in fact joules. All right, so and that will be the same for when we start doing things like work. So if we use an example of a 6 kilogram bowling ball, if we drop that from 20 metres, well, the weight of the ball is 6 kilograms, so that's going to be 6 kilograms times by gravity. And we'll use in this example, gravity is 10 metres per second. So that's got 60 newtons worth of weight. Right? So potential energy is in fact the weight times by the height. And so therefore that's going to be 6d times by 20, which is going to give you 1200 joules. Now, the other th way of looking at potential energy, we might say it's MGH, so mass times gravity times height. Okay, that's probably what I'll do. When the bowling ball's at the bottom, okay, it's got zero height, so it's got zero potential energy. So at the top, it's actually got its maximum potential energy, um, and so therefore, the other thing that we're going to be talking about is kinetic energy. All right, so any kinetic energy is half mass times by the speed or the velocity squared. And kinetic energy is going to be obviously zero when it's stationary. Um, and it's going to be probably the maximum when it's sort of at the bottom of when something falls. All right, so when we start looking at this example here, at the top where it's stationary, it doesn't have any kinetic energy, but when it's falling and it's at the bottom, it's got maximum kinetic energy. All right, so it takes two seconds to fall. You know that the speed of this object is going to be going 20 minutes per second. All right, so the kinetic energy is going to be half of the mass times by the speed squared. So it's going to be half of 6 times by 20 squared, which is going to give you 1,200 joules. Interesting. Okay, we'll be talking about the big idea. So the big idea here is that the ball there at the top has got 1,200 joules worth of kinetic potential energy zero kinetic energy at the bottom it's going to have zero potential energy and 120 uh, 1200 joules worth of kinetic energy halfway it should have 600 of potential energy 600 of kinetic energy so if it were rolled down the um, then the path or if it went for a uh, a roller coaster would have the same sort of concepts. So this is really roller coaster physics what we're starting to talk about here. So energy is a currency of motion. All right? So the conservation of energy states that the energy has to be cons conserved and so therefore the, the energy will be the potential energy plus the kinetic energy and it stays constant during that motion. All right? So keeping that in mind. So if we think of a pendulum swinging back and forth all right, so it's going to have its maximum potential energy when it's at its maximum height. Out there it's going to have some potential and kinetic. Here it's only going to have kinetic energy. Then it's going to go back to having some potential and some kinetic, depending on what its maximum height is. We would assume that the pendulum's not going to be able to go really any higher than you release it from. All right, so the demo, don't flinch pendulum. I'm going to quickly show you a YouTube clip which I think you'll find quite interesting. It's our mate Huey again. Been brushing and flossing your teeth, keeping them nice and healthy, huh? Not going to do much good if this 14-pound ball come crashing through them, yeah? Watch this. I want to show you a nice physics demo.
the ball doesn't smash my teeth. How come? How come? Because of a very important conservation principle called conservation of energy in physics, which states this. Take some energy to lift the ball, yeah? Now it has energy of position. Call it a potential energy. I let go. It turns into energy of motion, kinetic. Back to potential, kinetic, motion, but no more potential energy afterwards than that which I start with. Try this sometime. Give the ball a little push. You better move it ahead. You know why? Because you gave it some energy in addition to the potential energy, and it will come higher. All right, so if you see Huey, that was a pretty good little demo, uh, getting you the concept of um, what the pendulum does in energy. So if you're looking at a little bunny here, uh, if you drop it from a height, it's going to be hit with the same energy that you would do if you just dropped it from that height. It's going to have the same sort of energy if it goes along the pendulum. All right, so would the ball strike at a higher speed by falling from straight down or all the thing? It's going to have the same. Okay, it doesn't, it's about changing height that's really important here. So can you predict the speed of the ball on the track? Okay, obviously ball B goes faster because it falls further, so therefore it's going to have a faster velocity. Okay, we can demo this in the lab and we will do that using our roller coaster. So here's another demo, you've got a ping pong ball and a golf ball. Okay, so you're going to drop those two balls. After the collision, the speed of the ping pong ball is going to be three times larger than the than the actual um, golf ball. And the reason being is the ping pong ball is much lighter, so the speed after the collision is three times larger. So its kinetic energy is going to be nine times greater because remember that velocity is going to be s squared. So therefore, the ping pong ball rises nine times its original height, uh, which is pretty amazing. We'll have a go at doing that one in class as well. So when we start talking about work, work and energy are really similar, okay? Because what you have to do, if you think about this, if you pick that bowling ball up to a height of 20 meters, you actually have to do some work to do that. So the work is the force times by the distance travel. Um, and we'd say if you're pulling that upwards, okay, in the direction you want to go, we call that positive work. And then uh, if you're going in the opposite direction, we call that negative work. Um, and obviously, if you're doing perpendicular to the motion, then it's not changing its, energy, its potential energy, therefore you're doing no work. Um, the, the key thing there is the energy and work are measured in the same units of joules. Okay, so here's an example. So, you know, if you use a ramp, okay, you're going to uh, push something up over a small, over a long distance, so you need to use a smaller force than if you had to lift it straight up. So the people doing the same amount of work, it's just obviously this guy is a bit stronger over here than this person over here, or this person's using their brains and breaking your work up into smaller little bits of energy. Over here, so obviously when you're looking at the slaves, right, so the slaves are doing positive work there. The work done by the friction is going to be negative because it's in the opposite direction of where you're going. And work done by the ground, well, the work doesn't, the ground doesn't do any work, it just supports the load there that they're actually doing. Alright, so in the example of a car going, alright, so you're going to have uh, some work that's done by the brakes. Alright, so obviously at twice the speed the braking distance is four times as long. Okay, because remember the kinetic energy is V squared, so therefore um, that's going to change things. Um, I'm going to go through some examples of some questions in um, um, in another video for you just to show you how we actually do these things all right so uh, that's this is this video is about the theory uh, the other video I'm going to be doing is showing you how to actually put it into action so I'll talk to you soon